Hey everyone, Merrix here, bringing you another video. This is going to be the blue setup for Waller for boss battle. Um, at the end, I'll also show you how you can be the hero for your team's shield if your team isn't someone that wins turn one. Waller will be the destroyer of green shields, and you can be the hero for your faction. Um, first off, this Waller, I'm on the CC account, has both gears. Not really going to matter. Um, this is just to show you the gameplay loop and, and what you can expect out of Waller. If you have it, you'd want the Acolyte Ultimate Plate to go with this. If you don't know what that looks like, um, it's going to have an Acolyte symbol on it right here. Whenever you make six or more sub-gems, increase all your gem damage by 50% for your next turn. So you could have that as an Ultimate Dog Ear Gremlin Plate. Whenever you generate three or more sub-gems, increase your red and blue gem damage by 100%. What we're looking for here is the blue, because boss is going to give you a five-time, five-time, five-time Booker T, five-time buff. So five times, whatever you'll hit um, on a tour, you're going to hit five times harder. However, in boss battle, you're going to keep all of your multiply gems. So you're going to hit much harder in boss than you will showing this. That's why I'm not super worried about the gear. Um, what else? Um, this is set up for no gear, no Santa. This starts everything loaded turn one. I got Ozzy on here because a little more friendly. Memrock would be great. Ozzy's not terrible. Office 30%, also not terrible. Um, let's see, what else? The moves. Diving Elbow Drop, 7 MP blue, 185k damage, make 30 multiply gems into blue gems, Pinbar will not move. Seated Rear Chin Lock, 7 MP yellow submission, generate 30, I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, my bad. Seated rear chin lock, 7 MP yellow, generate 30 random sub gems, do 226k damage three turns, remaining turn into multiply gems of strength three. So 30 and 30. And then in, uh, discus clothesline, 6 MP blue, 188k damage, increase your yellow MP by 10. This is Everything's going to recycle. You won't have to swipe. So every cycle, your blue gems are going to get 100% better. Not actually technically 100% better, but you're going to add 100% gem damage every time if you have the acolyte you'll add 150 percent every time uh, as long as you don't swipe so that's the gameplay loop let's get in here um like i said all of your stuffage will be um stay in boss it won't here on the road also i'd recommend flopping the two blue moves uh because if you notice here when you hit this the left move comes up right away to hit use so this move should be on the left here so right away you just hit use Right, instead of having to click over here, it's a, it's not a long time, but it is time in boss, right? So I'll show you after this match because I'll play it twice, and then this would be empty, so you do the same thing here. You wouldn't have to click; it saves you an extra click, and and that's time, uh, that can be important. Anyway, gameplay loop super simple. You hit your sub, la di da di da. We're gonna lose a bunch of multiplies. Okay. Also, I just want to point out, if you have 17k Santa, put him where Ozzy is, and then if you have Sherry, put Sherry where Lex is. Um, that's sort of equivalent to what this would hit for. Your multiplies would be a little bit lower. But ballpark, um, this is 834k, and then times 5, 4 million apiece. Um, and then 30 of them is 120 million, plus your scouting buffs. Um, if you have Sherry, I think you can safely figure about 120 million um, on your first cycle. Uh, for boss, which is not amazing, actually, but it's 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 some damage. It'll clear lower content pretty well, uh, and it'll assist on harder content, but it's pretty snappy fast, and it recycles. And then in boss, if you miss, that's fine, because you're just going to cycle it again, and now you're going to hit way more because this is going to fill in the open spaces. You got more blues. You're going to connect blue. So your second hit will be way more. This will also resolve relatively quickly. There's no reason you shouldn't be able to get two, potentially even three cycles in in boss. So that is where it starts getting a little bit better. Plus, it's going to get a little bit harder each time. This is 996 or 1 million uh, times 5 would be 5 million. 30 gems would be... 150 million, right? So it just keeps getting better. 
in boss. <laughs> it's also this is uh this is a I point out this is a silver waller, so double everything I said for gold. So the 120 will be 240, the 150 will be 300. You do it a couple times, you know, now you're doing like almost uh what? Almost 300 turn 1, 450 if you get it three times. I'm not sure. Uh I don't use waller for boss yet. I love him for boss. He's really good, but I haven't used him, so I don't know how many times in particular um green spam has been what's used lately. I don't know how many times he can clock these three personally uh, in a turn. It'll be pretty close because, like I said, they are snappy. Two sh I know will be no problem. I feel like three cycles is kind of pushing it, though. If you know in the comments, feel free to share. Um, So, yeah, it's, this is your gameplay loop. Also... This is a great build for Waller, to be honest, in general. Um, you're not going to lose very many matches, if any, right? This is a silver versus a gold, um, and it just works really well, so. So I'll run this, and I'll reorder the moves, and then I'll show you guys how to be the hero when it comes to destroying um, green gems. So if you're in a faction that doesn't consistently turn one, you should focus... 100% focus on breaking the green gems because there'll be a problem breaking the shield. And you're, if you're not winning on turn one, you will have to break the shield. There's no way around it, you know? So, anyway, that's your loop. It's really simple. I'll reorder the moves and you can see for yourself how much faster it is. It's little things like that, though, that make a big difference in boss. How often have you been super close to getting a move off? And you're like, man, if I just had another split second, I would have got that move off. You also thing you notice with Waller here, you don't have to touch the gem board, which saves a lot of time moving your mouse or your finger back and forth. You wouldn't think so that it's that much time, but in boss, all that stuff matters. Um, it also matters in feud over the course of like, if you're feuding for like five or six hours, those little movements add up a lot. Um, just FYI. Let's get this here. Let me put this in the right spot. <laughs> right. And this is significantly faster. See what I mean? You don't need to click anything else. It just comes right up. Comes right up. You're just hitting use right away. It saves time. It's an extra click. Your brain has to process less. Uh, it just adds up and it's way more efficient. You should really, honestly... Defense is an illusion in this game. Um, you should be doing that in feud as well, regardless of how your character does his moves. Shaving those seconds off over the course of like five, six hours just adds up to a lot. You just see how much smoother this is as far as clicking. Um, and with Waller not touching the board um, and subbing every turn, I don't like most sub guys. This is a sub guy. If I had to run a sub, this is the best kind of sub guy, like for feud. One, he doesn't touch the board. Um, and two, like he subs every turn, um, and you just keep, keep, just keep it rolling, you know, just works really, really well, um, in general, but for this boss, this will be really smooth, right? Really consistent, um, and just see how much difference it makes ordering the moves. If you, if that's not something like you knew or have thought about, let me know in the comments too, because I feel like there's a lot of little stuff like this that I don't necessarily talk about a lot that makes a huge, huge difference, uh, overall. It just, it's, it's, it just saves time. All right. So we'll finish this up here. And then, um, I'll show you how I would run him for breaking the green shield. Now, if you don't have Ray, take the MP trainers off and put your green chuckers there. Whatever you got that can chuck green gems because you have a whole turn to get loaded. Right? Ignore the move set. The move set's wrong. That's the trainers. Um, you're only gonna worry about one move. And you're gonna Merix, why is that? Why am I only gonna worry about one move? So you have one job. If you're breaking the shield and it's a different color shield, green gems. Regardless of what you do, you are not doing good damage. This stuff is a waste of time on this boss. The only thing you care about is this stunner. So you're gonna put it in the left slot, it'll be filled every time. What you are going to do 
without fail is make sure this is loaded to start turn two when the boss uses his shield. Then as soon as this turn starts, you drop this and you break 40 green gems and then you spam it twice more. Shield is gone. Doesn't even take a full turn. You've broke it yourself. You're your faction's hero, right? Like that's all that you like. It, that is your job. You don't care about your damage. You care about the shield. Now, that being said, if you can use it, put a higher gem damage strap, etc. Every little bit helps. But your primary function, without exception, is to break that shield. Sammy is going to kill us this way, just FYI. But I will show you what I mean. Also, I so you're loaded, and you're going to chuck 45 gems, right? As long as there's four on the board, every single gem turns. You're going to click that literally three times and the shield's going to be broken. And you're going to be, your team is going to be able to get back to doing what they do. Your damage doesn't matter. You're the shield guy. Um, so if you're in a team that is struggling to win turn one and you're like, man, the shield won't go down, the shield won't go down. Almost everyone has Waller. Um, load them in with the green move and start winning some matches for your uh, faction. You can just see how easy that is. You can easily get that three times in like... If it's loaded to start, you're gonna get you're gonna break the board and there's probably gonna be a good 20, 30 seconds left. Probably not 30, but like 20 seconds left um, for your team to do damage before the um the freeze comes into effect or or whatever. A freeze is probably turn two, uh shield turn yeah, shield should be turn two, and shield should be turn three. So it'll give you time to more get more damage in before the freeze comes out. Also speaking of the freeze, uh Waller is focused. Um and he's been great in so many boss battles, like so many. He would be a fantastic guy to level your unfreeze. The best breaker, consistently most useful, most needed breaker, has been unfreeze. Um, it's not called unfreeze, that's what I call it. It is uh, hell freezes over. Consistently been the most useful, most important um, boss breaker. So Waller, if you want a good boss guy... Take him up to gold, level up, hell freezes over, and you're going to be an MVP and more faction bosses than not for your faction. Um, if your faction is somebody that's going to easily win turn one all the time without exception, a lot of this video maybe is not for you, but I think for like most factions, like ranking five to 500 in boss battle, Waller is going to be a super key part for a lot of people. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you found it helpful. Um, did I miss something? Um, yeah. Let me know what you think in the comments. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching. Good luck out there. Waller's so good in boss. Literally one of the best boss cards in the game. Um, super good.